so unpopular wrestling opinions this will be part one rapid fire lads you're allowed one unpopular opinion for each video so obviously this is one video so i want one unpopular opinion and we're going to start with jeremy miller because he normally has the least to say ray wyatt should have defeated the streak not brock lesnar because bray wyatt's character would then become the undertaker I think Bray Wyatt, back when he was, you know, part of the Wyatt family, he had R Harper and Rowan and Strowman. I think that was the perfect time. They were feuding with each other at one point, and he supposedly took his powers, but then nothing happened with it. So why not have him take the streak and become the new face of fear? The battle of teleportation, that's what that was. I, I disagree. I think Brock Lesnar was perfect because Brock Lesnar is the only person believable and powerful enough to knock off um, The Undertaker. The problem with Bray Wyatt at the time was that he was building the cachet to be like The Undertaker, but he wasn't quite there yet. So like, he could have taken it from him. The problem with Bray Wyatt is he didn't have long enough to be a really credible contender. Whereas Brock Lesnar, we've already known for the best part of two decades that he is a machine, a monster, that he could wreck shop. And that's basically what happened when he ran into The Undertaker. I don't see anyone else who could have ended the streak. I really don't. I've always believed that Brock Lesnar... I remember saying to my mate Rich about two years before he did it, I said, Brock Lesnar is the only guy who should beat the streak because he's the only one who legitimately could probably take The Undertaker down a beat the shit out of him like really kick the shine out of him although i always liked the idea of kane i always thought that was quite romantic the idea of maybe kane taking it away from him you know like sort of like you, my brother like took everything from me burning down the house all that kind of stuff from a story night perspective kane would actually work really well carl wilkinson unpopular opinion ah <clears throat> man people are gonna get real upset about this come on baby but um in my humble opinion I think CM Punk in 2013, when he realized that he wasn't, he was just going to be feuding with Triple H going into, uh, what was it, WrestleMania 30, I believe? Uh, that, yeah, in 2014, because he left yeah, at the Rumble in 2014. That he just took his ball and went home. He pulled an Austin and he just <laughs> threw a big middle, he took a big <laughs> middle finger at right. us as the WWE Universe. He just went, you know what? Fuck you guys, I'm going home. Screw you guys, I'm going home. I understand that he was WWE champion for 434 days because Paul Heyman said it every week and we couldn't forget. I understand that, you know, he did have some underlying injuries. I understand that he did need to take some time off. But did he ask for the time off? I honestly don't know. I've never listened to the Colt Cabana podcast, so I don't know. All the ins and outs, I'll be completely that honest will with help you guys. You. That will help you get some context on the argument, I have to say. I can understand no, where you're coming from, especially if you haven't listened to it, but I do recommend it. It is actually really good listening. Yeah, absolutely. I've I've got no problem doing that, but my opinion right now is based on the fact that I haven't. No, that's fine. That's absolutely and, fine. And yeah, and I think that he just fucked off. He wasn't happy with the position on the card, and he's like, you know what? I don't need this, and he just fucked off. I loved CM Punk in 2013. Like, I thought his heel run, when he, when he turned heel on The Rock at Raw 1000, I thought that was fucking brilliant. Um, you know, every time Cult of Personality came on the Titantron, I'd fucking lose my shit. But when he left, I felt like, personally to me, I know I've said it already, but he was like, yeah, fuck you, Kyle. I don't need this shit. So when, you know, when he was announced to come back for backstage, I didn't give a shit. I still do not care about him because as far as I'm concerned, he didn't care about us. I love that. How personal you've made that. Like he didn't care about me. I love that unpopular opinion. Like, because it's about how you felt like for the longest time, I thought Shawn Michaels was a piece of shit because of what he did to Brett and I never let it go for so long because I was a Bret Hart mark and I was Bret Hart till I die and I still am and like even now I still think oh fuck you Sean you little asshole you could have been a man about the whole situation but no, you had to be a whiny bitch and I love that I love the fact that you're just like fuck you punk you walked out on me 
You walked out on young Kyle. You left me there to die, basically. Fuck you. <laughs> I love it. I, um, you, love you left it. me so abandoned and alone. Yeah, he had his pipe on. This one's mine. Yeah, fucking great. I love it. Uh, well, I'll just throw mine in rather quickly um, <laughs> as we're going rapid fire because uh, I've got so many. So there's going to be a lot of these. Uh, we'll probably even record more straight after this. But for me, if you are a heel... In the purest sense of the term, you are a bad guy. And the crowd cheers for you. You are shit at your job. I am so sick of this modern era of... Oh, now, I'm guilty of it. I love cool, edgy heels. And I would cheer even the most despicable heels because, basically, I'm an arsehole. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> I just own it at this point. I like nasty, evil people. I'm the guy who was desperate for Agent Smith to win in the Matrix. I'm that guy. But what fucks me off is, now, I love Kevin Owens, but when Kevin Owens is a heel, and Sami Zayn is a heel, and I loved it, I, I, this is a weird thing about this unpopular opinion. Remember when they came out in Canada, and the crowd lost their shit? I think it was a couple of years ago, and they were dancing, a crowd were going absolutely spare, and they were playing up to the crowd, and going, <laughs> we're Canadian. <laughs> and it, I just thought, I loved it, but there was a part of my mind that said, you're not very good at being a heel. You should never play to the audience. And I should tag it on with also fans who fucking get pissy and say that people go too far as a heel or, oh, that's too cheap. Oh, he used homophobic language or whatever. I don't give a shit. If he's a bad guy, you should fucking deal with the fact that he says bad shit. And if it offends you, boo fucking who? You're meant to be offended. That's the whole idea. So when people were like, oh, the Briscoe brothers, it's fucking nonsense. People need to accept that heels are heels. But most importantly, heels need to fucking be heels. I think the worst example of that right now is, uh, uh, is Chris Jericho. Like, he's the biggest heel in AEW. You know, he's the fucking man. But the crowd just sing Judas the entire time and unfortunately I don't recall I've ever seen Chris tell them to shut the fuck up I think he, he might have done it once but you know he's like that cool edgy heel and the crowd just lose their tits every time he comes out because he has a really catchy theme song but I'm supposed to be booing Chris Jericho I'm supposed to be going man you fucking shoved a needle in Moxie's eye or whatever the hell it was boo you Oh, but wait, Judas is coming on, and I'm going to fucking rock out? That That's stupid to me. The, those fans really kind of, they really grind my gears. Perfect. Uh, we'll leave it there. Uh, let us know what your own popular opinions in wrestling are, ladies and gentlemen. Leave them in the comments below. Like, subscribe, hit the notifications button, as always, because there's going to be a lot more of these coming. But that's part one of wrestling's most unpopular opinions, brought to you by the boys at WrestleClug. <laughs>